You might outwork me for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, but you ain't gonna beat me over a year. You can't outwork me over two years. You aren't gonna outwork me over three years. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'm a dripping damn faucet. I just keep coming at you. Great entrepreneurs are constantly conscious of selling the dream to their employees, to their clients, to their vendors. Most people underestimate what total obsessive laser focused really is and what it looks like. Great leaders always sell the dream. Leaders must have vision because of your position. Just by being a position of a leader, you are in front of everybody, aren't you? Which means your point of view should be different. You can see things they can't see. Your job as a leader is to say, here's what I see. This is how amazing it is and this is how we're going to get there. So great leaders, like that book said, sell the dream constantly. Great entrepreneurs are constantly conscious of selling the dream to their employees, to their clients, to their vendors, to potential clients, to people they sell, to people they do business with, to people in the warehouse, no matter what your business is, I don't care what it is, always be selling the dream. Listen to me, always be selling the dream and do it repetitiously. Don't get tired of saying the same things over and over again. See, business is not about saying new things to old people. Business is about saying old things to new people. So constantly be selling the dream. People quitting, chargebacks, flunking the exam. That's all gonna happen. Just get ready. If you're an entrepreneur and you wanna do something great, you're gonna have false start after false start. False start after false start. Get it going, then you don't. Get it going, then you don't. Your group grows, then it shrinks. I'm telling you right now. Just know that. You're gonna make some money, then you're not. Being an entrepreneur, tons of false starts, tons of setbacks, but the, see, a guy like me, I knew someone was better than me. There's more talented people than me. Probably more talented than you. But like my dad said, the best ability is availability. You might outwork me for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, but you ain't gonna beat me over a year. You can't outwork me over two years. You aren't gonna outwork me over three years. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'm a dripping damn faucet. I just keep coming at you. Just like you could be, right? Just like you could be, I just keep coming. You might think I'm knocked out, I just keep coming. I'm too damn tough to give up. Most people half-ass half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna flinch. They were gonna get down. They may not quit. They might send a letter of resignation. They quit getting wide. They quit recruiting people. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in. They spend all their damn money. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm gonna save money. I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless, just like you should. Don't give in to that stuff. Don't give in to the fears. Don't give in to the setbacks. You're gonna have failure. It's part of the game. One of the things that human beings underestimate dramatically is their capacity to get great at something if they're totally immersed in it, totally laser focused on something. But as I've coached the very high end athletes in my life, the top business people and entertainers, I can tell you that most people underestimate what total obsessive laser focused really is and what it looks like because you are way more powerful than you know you are if you went crazy, psycho, obsessed, laser focused on anything, even something you're totally ill prepared for. Humans have an unreal capacity to get great at things, even if they don't have a natural talent for it, if they're immersed in it, and to learn something and acquire a ton of knowledge in a short period of time as well. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win, to just divert your focus and attention. Look over here, look at this shiny thing, look at this TV show, look at this sports team, worry about what's going on here in this war, and they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed, we never get laser focused for an extended period of time. You get to choose your life. You get to choose how you feel, not other people. There's these illusions in life. We really can't control anything other than our own thoughts, our own behavior, our own patterns. We can't control what other people do, say, or think. And it's this illusion of control oftentimes that we can somehow manipulate other people or manipulate situations that cause us to fall into these patterns. But what we do have the power of in life is we have the power to choose. And I say this to you because I'm somebody just like you. I struggle with the different patterns I have. Some of them serve me, some of them don't. 
I sometimes engage in thoughts that don't create the right emotions for me, that don't serve me. I know what it's like to be frustrated and angry and depressed and down and lost and fearful and worried. Worry is a big one for me. I love to fall into the pattern of worry when certain circumstances begin to happen. It creates a trigger and a pattern in me. And man, do I love to worry. And so I give you these tools and resources because these are things I too struggle with. I've been able to overcome them by just being aware and choosing. And so the first thing is the power of choice. Finish this sentence for me. I choose to be blissful rather than blank. I choose to be blissful rather than blank. What would your answer be? One of the emotions I challenge you to experience more of in life is bliss. You know, we are the calibration of maybe the five emotions we experience on a regular basis. And so if you're experiencing depression, frustration, worry, fear, anxiety, pain on a regular basis, you're gonna have one life. If you're experiencing bliss and fulfillment and ecstasy and joy in, in your life and, and contribution, recognition and significance, if you're experiencing love, you experience those emotions, you have a totally different life. We have the power to choose which emotions we want to experience. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. There's nothing wrong with even having problems. There's a challenge if we continue to repeat the same mistake that causes the same problems. And so what can I learn from this? Now you're leveraging this problem to grow. Now this isn't something you're just overcoming and putting behind you, but you're using this experience and this challenge to move in front of it not just get it behind you. There's a big difference in that perspective. What's great about this problem? That's a difficult question to ask when you're going through the middle of it, Ed. No, it's not. Not if you build the habit, not if you begin to think like this, because what that does is it changes the meaning to you. It puts you in an empowering state and not a disempowering state. You've gotta get hungry and you've gotta get focused. And I know these sound like basic things, but go to any area of your life you want something right now. Pick the number one thing you wanna change. Body, money, business, relationship, faith. I don't care what it is. Pick it right now. One to 10, how hungry are you? How desperate are you? One to 10, the most desperate and hungry you could be. Rank yourself. Number two, how laser crazy obsessed focused are you on what it is you want? One to 10. 10 being hyper psycho crazy obsessed focus, nothing's in your way. And to the extent you can increase your desperation and hunger and your obsessive focus will be to the extent that you can flourish. Because when those things convene and converge, all of a sudden, the collaborations, the people, the circumstances, the breakthroughs, the insights necessary begin to reveal themselves to you. And not only that, reveal themselves to you with momentum and speed at which you cannot believe. You can wake up a year and a half later, be number one in the world at something that you didn't even know existed before. I'm a testimony to that, and you can be as well. Your success is gonna be predicated more than anything on your hunger and desperation level and your ability to get laser focused and eliminate the distractions in your life. This is what makes us great. Always be recognizing people, always be holding people up, always acknowledge people that are performing at a high level. Build an environment where you're recognizing people all the time so that people want to rise up. You know, if you have an environment of recognition all the time, that the people who aren't being recognized see the ones who are and want that to happen. So recognition elevates the company, elevates your vendors, elevates your clients. By the way, what do you do to recognize your clients? What do you do in your business to recognize your clients? What do you do to recognize your recruits? What do you do to recognize your employees? What do you do to recognize your vendors? What do you do to recognize your assistant? What do you do to recognize people? How great are you at recognizing people? And one of the things we've not covered that is such a critical part of communication, and maybe more important than what you say, is your ability to listen to people. It's a huge part of communication. You know, I've taught you before that people don't respond to what they hear or see, they respond to how they feel when they interact with you. And one of the best ways to make somebody feel good is that they feel listened to and that they feel heard. I think being a great listener has lots of benefits. One, people will like you more. Two, you're going to learn more. Three, it takes the pressure off you. And so listening skills are so critical. Whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent in your life, your current level, of happiness, of joy, of success, of fulfillment, is exactly what you think you deserve. It's exactly what you think you're worth. It's a hard thing to accept, but in our lives, we are getting out of our life right now exactly what we believe we're worthy of, exactly what we think we deserve. Our life is a direct reflection of our identity, 
which is the thoughts, concepts, beliefs, values, and worth we hold true to be about ourselves. And so as hard as it is to accept, we're getting out of life right now what we believe we're worth. And we believe we're worth it because of these patterns and our identity and our lack of choosing to have what we want. Not just the material things, not just the body fat, not just the body weight, not just the amount of money, not just having the relationship, but choosing the emotion we want. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.